Hello and welcome to another video on latent class analysis in M+. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials usually related to multivariate statistical models such as structural equation or latent class models often involving the M+ software. And so if this is something that interests you then please consider subscribing to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the like button and to leave a comment in the comment section. In this video, I want to give you the basics of how to run a multi-group latent class analysis in the M plus software. This is something that could be useful if you wanted to compare the latent classes across known groups, for example, across males and females or across different countries or other known groups. And so in M plus, this works using the so-called known class option. So unlike a multi-group factor analysis or multi-group structural equation model, which I also discuss here on this channel, by the way, and I'm linking the video in the description. This doesn't involve the grouping option in the variable statement, but instead it works only by using the known class option. So this is the first thing that you have to know, because if you're a structural equation modeling uh, M plus user, you might think, oh, I can use the grouping option in the same way as I would for a multi-group confirmatory factor analysis, maybe, and this actually does not work. So really what is key here is the known class command. In the known class command, we treat our grouping variable, in this case gender, as a latent class variable that isn't latent, so to say, so meaning a known grouping variable, a known class variable, and then we can include this variable in our classes statement, and that then gives us flexibility in specifying our latent class model in M+. For example, we can then include group-specific constraints or when we have a latent transition analysis model we can put constraints across time and groups and all kinds of specific parameters can then be um, constrained or not constrained using the M plus model statement. So this is how it works. So it's kind of similar to the grouping option with multi-group structural equation modeling and factor analysis. You specify a known class and then you pick a label for your known class. So this G here is a label that I picked for gender. And in this case, my gender variable has two levels, one for, um, I actually don't know. So oh, one is actually for females. So I'm labeled this it down here. So I have to tell M plus gender equals one and gender equals two other two categories. And so the first one is for females, the second one is for males. And so this, this way M plus knows, okay, this is the grouping variable that is known and it's here in the names list, otherwise it wouldn't work. So you have to have the grouping variable as part of your data set, obviously in the names list defined. And then you can say here gender um, is those two categories of gender is what constitutes this variable. Now notice that upper or lowercase doesn't matter. So here I used uppercase for some reason, letters, and then here lowercase and M plus um, doesn't care. So then the next thing is that unlike a single group latent class analysis, which I also discuss on this channel, and you can check out the description for a playlist on latent class analysis. Unlike a single group latent class analysis, here we now have two class variables. One is our known class variable G with two levels or two classes, so to say, those are the two gender groups. And then also L, L is the latent class variable. So this is again a label that I picked L for my actual latent classes. And in this case, I'm extracting a three class solution here. Furthermore, you have to specify type equals mixture as you would with a regular latent class or latent profile analysis or any kind of mixture distribution analysis in M plus. Now, the known class option defined in this way allows us to now include this known grouping variable as a variable in our model statement. And you can see that we have an overall statement here, which you don't need if you run just a 
standard single group latent class analysis. Remember that in M plus you don't even need any model statement if you just run an unconstrained latent class model without any kind of parameter restrictions, you don't need a model statement. However, you do need a model statement for a multi-group LCA because you typically do want to constrain certain parameters to be equal across groups for an easier interpretation or at least you want to test a model where you have parameter restrictions, so-called measurement equivalents or measurement invariance restrictions across groups so that you have comparable classes. And so the first model um, statements that we include here under overall is that we regress our latent class variable onto our known class variable. And so the latent class variable has, in this case, three categories. And so we need to include um, two model statements here for regressing that latent class variable onto gender. Gender, ha gender has only two categories. and the um, last category serves as reference because this is a logistic so say regression statement where we regress the class variable on the grouping variable using logistic regression and the last class l pound three is serves as reference so we don't need a statement for that and in fact you actually could simplify this in m plus and you could simply say l on g and delete this one and then um, m plus would automatically do the right logistic regression. Now, why are we doing this? Why are we including this um, logistic regression of the latent class variable on the known class variable here, or the grouping variable? It's done so that the class sizes can vary across genders, because what the statement says is basically that the latent classes depend on gender. So the size of these latent classes might depend on gender, meaning they're not equal. So the class sizes are not necessarily the same across males and females. If you didn't include this statement here, then M plus would set the class sizes equal across genders, which may be something that you may want to test. But um, in most cases, we're actually interested in the differences of the class sizes across our known groups. And so we want to include this uh, regression statement here that regresses the latent class variable on the known class variable so that we can have different class sizes across groups. Furthermore, we have not just the overall statement, but we also have class specific or specific statements for specific classes. And so the way that this works is we're using both labels in these, do, in these percentage signs, g pound one dot l pound one means we're referring to the first latent class in the gender group one. And we are telling M plus that the conditional response probabilities for our binary indicators in this case are supposed to be held equal across genders. So, by giving the same labels here in parentheses, one, two, three, four, five, in this group and in the group G2L1, which is then the second gender group, the group male, so the same class and group males has the exact same, or is supposed to have the exact same conditional response probabilities because we're giving the same labels here. So M plus will hold the conditional response probabilities, for example, for this item action equal across males and females in class one. And that's what we typically want. So you want to have uh, group invariant classes, meaning classes that have the same profiles across groups so that you can compare the class sizes. Because otherwise, if you had different classes across groups and or if they were in a different order across groups, then you couldn't easily compare the class sizes or it wouldn't make any sense because if the classes are different across males and females then then why would you compare their, their sizes at all and so this is basically how we establish measurement equivalence or measurement invariance across groups in LCAs by setting these conditional response probabilities equal across groups with these labels here and so then you can see that I'm doing the same thing for class 2 latent class 2 here in group females and then latent class two in group males has the same labels again, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, where the item 
um, thresholds or item conditional response probabilities are held equal and the same for class 3. Class 3 also you can see here has those equal labels across the gender groups. So that's how you specify a multi-group latent class analysis with measurement equivalents across groups in M plus and where you allow the group class sizes to be different across groups using the known class option. I hope you found this video useful for getting started with a multi-group latent class analysis in M+. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional videos and workshops. And I'll see you next week.